Hello, welcome to CIS 240L, Linux configuration and installation. This is David Mandel, and this is the introduction to the week. So the first thing, let's look in uh, Desire to Learn and see what the material is for this week. It says, take a look at Caligator. At Caligator for this week, we have um, oh, quite a few groups meeting this week. Um, I can't tell you what all these groups are, but most any of them would be a good group to go to. Actually, uh, including the Portland Mayoral um, uh, group, um, at least the um, um, current mayor is taking quite an interest in open source software and um, the role of open source in the city of Portland. And did a great deal to help us keep OSCON in Portland. So, um, yeah. On Thursday night, among other activities, and there are quite a group of activities in Portland on Thursday, there is the Portland Linux Unix group meeting. Um, don't fear auto config tools. I'll let you look that up and see what it is. I'll be there, of course, and um, since I coordinate that group. And um, you're all very, very, very welcome, and I'd uh, like to see you there. On Saturday, there's kind of a cute thing here. The Portland Area Robotics Society meets. I would really like to go to that myself. I have not been going to those because Portland is a long, long ways from Corvallis, and um, so I generally don't get to those. OK, the reason we brought this up, of course, is that um, you've got a lab coming up, which we'll discuss a little bit later, that does involve um, attending an open source event. OK, first thing, Lab 10, which was for last week, I postponed and moved to this week. So it's assigned for this week. It actually covers the material from last week rather than this week. but. Um, um, and we will not do a Lab 11, which covers the material for this week, um, but that's fine. Um, OK, um, just let's take a look. Um, on Lab 10, what you have is um, several options on what you want to do for Lab 10. The first is that you can install some equipment because one of the roles of systems administrators is always installing new and interesting equipment. So if you have a printer or scanner or something of that type, I recommend a printer since scanners are kind of boring. Um, they're very easy to install with Linux. But um, if you have a printer, I would recommend installing it and, and playing around with the printer. You can do all sorts of things with printers with uh, Linux, and you can share your printers. You can share a Linux printer to a Windows machine. You can share a Windows printer to a Linux machine. Um, you can do all sorts of things with printers on Linux, uh, which we covered during the last set of videos. Um, the, uh, however, Sometimes a printer may be difficult to set up if you're using Linux as a virtual machine under VMware, under VMware or VirtualBox or what have you. It can certainly be done, but sometimes because the printers connect to a USB or some other type of port, uh, like a parallel port or, a, well, SCSI, well, I don't know, serial port, I don't know. Um, they used to do that. Uh, since a printer connects to the hardware itself, and sometimes it's hard to get to the hardware through the virtualization layer, um, this task m could be more difficult if you're using a virtual machine for your Linux than if you're using real bare bones hardware. Um, one reason I like real bare bones hardware for learning Linux. Um, However, an alternative is to set up a couple virtual machines and try to SSH between them or SSH from one machine to another, even SSH between a Windows box and your Linux box. Um, 
SS, there's an SSH, uh, uh, open source SSH client for Windows called Putty that you can download free of charge. Uh, you won't get quite the same, you won't get all the abilities with running SSH on Windows that you will running SSH on, on Linux, at least unless you do an awful lot of work, because you can't pass X Windows or it's, because Windows does not run X Windows, so there's l certain limits on what you can do. You can still do an awful lot. It's a very valuable thing to do. Um, and a lot of us use Putty a good deal on Windows machines, or maybe I don't, but a lot of people do. Um, OK. And um, so see just what you can do with that uh, as an option. Your last option is um, I'm not really going to require that you write another shell script, but do all the background work to design a shell script to add users to a system. Because as we talked about earlier, it's really useful, uh, it's really important to be able to add users to a system in a nice coordinated fashion. And sometimes, you know, you'll have 30, 40, 100, 10,000 students to add to your system at, um, um, at one time. And you're not going to do that with some GUI. The only fast, efficient way to do that is to write a shell script that will uh, install all your u users for you in a, uh, a fast, efficient way. Um, so. Um, and the way to do, the easiest way I've found to do that is you get a big long list of student names of new students and you massage that list with tools. My tool of choice is Emacs and I write a lot of Emacs macros that can massage that and make it look like this bash shell and that will take maybe about five minutes to do. Um, after you've done it the first hundred times. <laughs> and you can add 10,000 users to your system really quickly. Um, now, I, I will admit it that does take a little bit of uh, Emacs experience. Um, but, but think this through. Uh, or that, that's certainly one of your options. And then describe what you have, um, um, what you've done. And in at least a couple paragraphs, don't shortchange me. A few people are shortchanging me a little bit on these, although most of the write-ups are quite good. Um, but uh, you know, uh, I want to know that you're actually getting what you want, I, um, should be getting out of this. Then your next and last assignment for this class will be Lab 12, or which has been written already. It's Oregon, the open source state, and. Um, and basically, that is the one that says, go to an open source event and report on the open source event. I really, 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 well, obviously, I would not coordinate open source events. I wouldn't be going places like supercomputing in Seattle or scale in Southern California or OSCON here in Portland if I didn't think open source events weren't important. I really, really think there is nothing more important than personal one-on-one -on -one interaction or one with a group interaction. and even though I'm teaching this class virtually over the internet, I really, really think that um, um, attending events is really important and getting to know people. You can't, you can't sit down and drink beer with people over the internet. Well, maybe you can, but I, I don't find it as satisfying. There are certain things, yes, the internet is really great. And believe me, I love I love Skype. I love to be able to uh, Skype to my friend, to, to to my kids in China or uh, Brazil, or to my friends in Malaysia. And um, you know that that's the only way I could see them. Um, and peop, you know, friends of mine Skype to relatives in the Middle East or or oh, I, actually, um, Gindo, a friend of mine in Mali. Uh, 
uh, got a hold of me yesterday or the day before. And, um, you know, that's terrific. But it is not the same as being someplace in person. So I really, really would like to see everybody go to an open source event in person. If you really can't, um, then listen to a podcast or two, depending on the length of them. Spend some time, you know, a couple hours, because if you go to an open source event, it will take you a couple hours. So listen to at least a couple hours of podcast. And I'm listing here some places that I you can find podcast. Um, I, I'm um, the the first one is just a list of places that has podcasts. There's some place on that site. There's a list of podcasts that of uh, for open source events. The one I am most familiar with myself is Floss Weekly. Floss Weekly is usually hosted by Randall Swartz. Randall is a lo local Oregon boy. He's a he's a friend of mine, working in Los Angeles at the moment. But but um, Randall, you know, he gets Randall's very well known. He's the author of or co-author of of most of the important books on Perl programming. Um, um, he's quite famous. And um, and he gets just as a result he gets really top name guest. I mean I think he oh I, I think I know he's interviewed Linus he's interviewed um, oh well, it, it's a who's who of who's in open source software he's interviewed almost anybody he wants uh, the Linux Action Show I know less about but. Um, um, but I have met the uh, the people that run it, and uh, and I've seen talks by them, and um, they uh, they sometimes go up to Linux Fest Northwest in Bellingham and give a really good talk. And um, this is a very pop popular show, and I recommend it too. Um, and Linux Outlaws is widely watched. I don't know if I've ever watched a broadcast of Linux Outlaws. Um, but I've read the I've read the abstracts and you know so uh, it it looks cool um, and there's a lot of other ones in fact actually I'm only speaking about the English language ones there's, there's ones in uh, every language on earth I think but uh, okay and then write up a um, a good description of this and uh, and that will be um, that will be that event. OK. Um, the last thing on my list is um, we always have course evaluations. And um, the, um, I am, after I make these, uh, these videos, I am going to open the course evaluations. You will get an email telling you how to evaluate the course. I really, really would very much appreciate if you do evaluate the course um, and and um, and do so fairly. And um, I also really, really appreciate if you take the time and trouble to write um, um, where it says, you know, do you want to say more? To say more and give me some clues on how to improve the class and things of that type. Uh, that's probably especially important since, since this is the first time I've ever given a distance learning class. So, um, um, so please help me out and evaluate the class. I'm going to evaluate you. You get a chance to evaluate me. Um, I have graded all the assignments up to Lab 9. I've been kind of giving you guys a little bit of extra time to get Lab 9 in, but I am going to grade it very, very soon because um, I want to get everything graded as soon as I can. Um, so um, that will take care of that. Uh, and then tonight we will talk about Chapter 11 on compression, system backup, and um, um, software installation, and I'll be back in a few minutes to start talking about that. Okay? Bye-bye.